If you are watching this video, you have definitely watched the first video on the main channel, and it's of this amazing Reverend uh, Charger guitar. And I talked about the fact that there was a 55 point inspection done by Sweetwater, and there's a card, and that this is the video content that it's missing from that video, in case you're interested. Before I go any further, I'd like to point out that I once did a video where I got a guitar from Sweetwater, and I was not happy with it. And that video is still up to this day. When I talked to the Sweetwater people after the video was made, I said, I assumed the guitar was set up and done to the, to the best of ability based on 55 things. That's a lot of things to cover. But more importantly, I said, the problem is you don't tell me what things you checked. And uh, so would you publish that? They had never published that before. It is now published on their website. But more importantly, they've went a step further and they've added it to this card. So we're gonna go over it. So there's Sweetwater's 55 point inspection and it basically says handling. So basically one of the things is that they wait uh, 24 hours before they open these out of the boxes. So that's a good piece of advice. I like that piece of advice. Next thing they checked off was that they verified the contents and accessories. So obviously it's, I would assume, but I do not know, that they must have a list of what was supposed to be in this box. And so they're checking against that to make sure that those things are in there. Or maybe they're just checking the things are in there, and they, but we, we don't know. Now they go through a cosmetic and construction inspection. They inspect the polish of the body, the fingerboard surface, neck and neck joint, strings. Hey, it has strings. No, I'm sure, I'm sure they're looking for corrosion, uh, nicks, chips, issues with the strings. Then it says, plastic parts. So I'm assuming they're looking at pick guards, switch tips, anything that might have damage, discolorization issues like that. Hardware, same thing, probably looking for discolorization. Um, inlays, making sure, my guess is not only the inlays look wrong, but they're not lifted. That's a real common thing with inlays. Sometimes they lift uh, when the guitar, the, the neck dries, the fretboard dries out and the fretboards kind of lift out a little bit. And you can feel that when you're doing a bend. Uh, it's really awkward when you do that bend, you kind of bump the edge of that inlay, especially dots. Uh, binding, so of course this guitar has binding on the side. On the side, they're probably checking to make sure it was scraped and uh, checked properly. Uh, that would be what I'm assuming. And again, I'm assuming what they're looking for. They're telling me in the list, all of us, what, they're, what, they, what they did. I'm telling you what I think they're looking at. Maybe I need to fly to Sweetwater and actually sit with somebody and have them go through this. If you think I should do that, please put a comment down below. Maybe we can make that happen. Then they check the nut, which of course is a very important thing. Probably make sure that it was cut correctly. There's no issues or pieces hanging off of it. And uh, the headstock, hey, it has one. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if you bought a headless guitar and they checked headstock and you're like, wait, it doesn't have one. No, I'm sure they're checking again for damage blims. Uh, a lot of times on headstocks, what I see is a lot of crappy sanding work uh, towards the end of it. You know, they're rushing and they're looking, you know, when you're sanding and polishing in the factory, you're, you're looking at the sides, the, you know, this way, you're looking this way. Very rarely do you kind of, you know, take a look. And so I notice that if you look at a lot of guitars, especially inexpensive ones, there's a lot of sanding marks where it hasn't been finished sanded enough and then buffed on the tip of the headstock. So maybe they're looking for that. Hardware check to make sure it has hardware. It says uh, motion and vibration test. That I don't know what that is. So that would be interesting to know. Uh, does that mean that they, you know, turn the knobs and do the switch and that's motion and vibration, like shaking it with their hand? Like vibration check, is that their way of saying, because think of it this way. The way I would see that is if I kind of shake the knobs to see if they're loose, is that a vibration test for the heart? <laughs> or do they actually put it on like a pad that's like with one of those old uh, vibrators from the from the beds at the hotels. Then they're gonna check the bridge. I'm assuming they're checking the intonation at that point, but again, they don't really check the setup. If you notice, this is an inspection of the manufacturer's build quality is not a setup, which is not yet at least. Then they're gonna check the tuning machines. Again, probably making sure like if these are locked ones, they're tight, which these are, which is cool. Uh, and then I imagine they turn them a little bit. Sometimes you notice like one's loose, one's you know kind of really hard to turn, stiff. And, Maybe they're checking that. Then they're checking the strap buttons. Okay, that would be also probably a vibration test, right? Because I would notice if I would do that, I would kind of shake and make sure they're not loose. So maybe that's what that is. I turn on them a little bit. Uh, truss rod cover. In this case, this guitar does not have one and it's not marked. So obviously somebody's paying attention. So checking to make sure. Pick guard. So again, not only checking to see if there's a pick guard, but probably looking for imperfections or issues with the pick guards. Uh, my guess is uh, like chips and nicks on the edges. Sometimes the when they're doing the router, you know, there was when they're kind of cutting them, sometimes they get a little, they get a little caught in there. Output jack, again, probably testing again to see, make sure it's tight uh, and that it's uh, working, I would imagine. 
Uh, switches, same thing. Potentiometers, again, uh, they're not taking this guitar apart. You just know that there's no way, there's no time for them to do that. So again, potentiometers are probably turning them, making sure. Maybe they plug the guitar in and make sure they don't crackle. Uh, pickup screws and rings, same thing in this case. They looked, uh, they don't see any uh, loose screws. I would look for, if I was looking for that, I'd look for little chips and nicks in the screw heads. Maybe somebody used the wrong kind of screwdriver. Sometimes they nick those. Neck joint screws and bolts. So again, on this guitar, they did, because it's not a set neck or a neck through, so they looked. Again, making sure those tight. That's what I would do. I would have a, uh, a screwdriver uh, put in there and make sure that they're, they're uh, seated correctly and tight because if they're loose, the neck will, of course, move. Uh, uh, so that's not good. String trees, this case has one string tree, making sure I'm sure it's strings are underneath it. That's real common with factories and inexpensive guitars. This is not an inexpensive guitar, but sometimes the string isn't in the, the, the string tree, it's above it because the employee didn't run it through. Or maybe they ran it through and then something happened, they loosened the string and then they tightened it back up and they didn't pay attention. It happens to, to me sometimes when I'm working on guitars for a customer. I, I string it back up and then I look over and I go, ah, crap. And I, I got to loosen the string and tuck it back in the string tree because it kind of come out. They did do a battery compartment test, a locking nut, but of course they didn't do it in this case because of the fact that it doesn't have uh, those things. Electronics testing. So this is, got, I would assume they got to plug the guitar in to do this. Output jack and uh, plug fit. So again, that's when they're going to test that and make sure that's working. Uh, pickup switch. So again, they're probably checking, maybe checking to see each position to see if it works or just seeing if there's crackle or, or making noise. Potentiometers, I would imagine, same thing. They're listening for crackle or noise, uh, scratchy pots, which would be dirt in them. Uh, sometimes, uh, believe it or not, I know you're like, it's a brand new guitar, but the dirt is actually worse than dirt is the sawdust in the air at the factories. That stuff gets in there and it's basically the same thing. It crazy, causes all this crackling because the uh, contacts, the two metal contacts uh, have pieces of of dust in there and they're creating that noise. Pick up splitting or tapping, they checked that, but in this case, they didn't check it on this guitar because it doesn't have that. Onboard battery tuner, doesn't have it, so they didn't check it. Electric pickups, they checked that. Then they have a section for acoustic pickup, onboard pickup. So I'm getting the sense, 55 point inspection doesn't guarantee that they do 55 points. There's just 55 points they check. The guitar would have to have all those points. So obviously what I'm seeing here is a 13 pin pickup, onboard, eff onboard effects, onboard preamp, acoustic pickups, those four things uh, there weren't are on this guitar, so they can't check them. So this is essentially, without even looking at the other checks and balances, this is a 51 point inspection. So interesting thing I would think to talk about. Playability check, okay. Check the tuning machines for tuning pitch, okay. So again, probably turning them, making sure they're, they're working properly. Stretch strings and tune to pitch. Okay, so they do a quick string stretch on that. That's smart, uh, give them credit for that. String and saddle position. So again, making sure that they're over on the right spots of the saddles, making sure that that's important. That is, believe it or not, that's a common problem as well. Tremolo bridges of the saddle sometimes is loose and it's angled a little bit to the to the side. And on a hardtail bridges like this, sometimes the string's not sitting into the slot correctly. Neck relief. So they check neck relief, but it doesn't say. We don't know if they adjust the neck relief. So they obviously are checking to make sure that there's a proper neck relief. How I would do that is I would push the uh, the first fret with the my finger here. I would push the last fret with my thumb right here, and I would slightly tap on the about the 12th fret but i mean you could do anywhere between the 15th fret to the to 10th fret somewhere on there i like the 12th fretish area and what you're looking for is you want the string to barely uh be above the fret like you know i just want to like right now i'm touching it and it's barely barely i barely touch it to touch this the fret uh so that would mean that's good so obviously if i did this and the string was laying right on the frets that means the neck is a little too tight. The truss rod's a little too tight. Uh, if it was really high, I did this and it's still really high, and I'm pushing around, that means that it's got too much relief. So somebody did check this because uh, looking at it, I haven't measured it yet, but looking at it, I'm not saying it's a perfect setup by any means. I don't know, but the relief looks good at least. Frets, so they're checking the frets. My guess is they're checking the sides, making sure there's no burrs uh, or frets sprout, uh, looking for nicks or dents issues with frets, corrosion, I would imagine. Again, don't know if they're doing anything about that, but they are inspecting it. Action height, so they are checking the height. So a 55 point inspection seems to imply a basic setup. A basic setup is not a performance setup. I like those two words, basic and performance. Basic setup would be exactly that. We're gonna make this guitar playable, <laughs> right? In other words, you know, it's exactly that. You can pick it up and you go, oh, it's what you can complain all day about everything, the way it feels and how it's not adjusted to the way you like it, but it is playable. 
basic setup. Performance setup is exactly that. It's set up to perform at the best, the premium this guitar can do. Notice I say not what the player wants it to do. Sometimes guitars can only be as good as the guitar can be, right? That's just the reality of things. And it has nothing to do with price point. I know what you're thinking, like a Squire can only be as good as a Squire and a Fender can only be as good as Fender. That's not true. Each guitar is different. And so you have customers sometimes and they'll say, hey, I want this guitar to come in maybe at you know, one millimeter off the, you know, the 12 fret. I want it really super low action. I want this. And you can do all that and just the guitar is just not performing at its best. In other words, it's the, night, the notes are decaying. There's uh, you know, a little bit of uh, uh, fret, what we call fret sizzle, uh, like it's buzzing. And uh, you know, now you have choices. You know, do we crown a level frets? Do we, you know I mean? We're gonna kind of rework the guitar. See, when I think of a performance setup, sometimes that's what's implied I have to do almost rebuild this guitar. And I know that's kind of silly to say it that way because you're not really physically rebuilding it, but you know what I mean? Redoing somebody's fretwork, so a factory's fretwork is kind of redoing it. So performance setup. So like I said, it's implied here they're doing some kind of basic setup. They're checking the intonation. Again, something that I would do in a basic setup. If the guitar can't in, isn't intonated, it can't be played. Pickup height, adjusting that or checking it. Tremolo system, this doesn't have one, but they would check it if it did. So again, now we're down to 50 point inspection. <laughs> Actually, according to this, Let's do the, do, the, do the marks. Hold on. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So this is a 44 point inspection. <laughs> it's, but it's good because there's only 44 things to check on this guitar. But interesting to know that, isn't it? Because like I said, it says 55. You're like, what could they check? Well, obviously, uh, they can only check the things the guitar has in the inspection. Play test all notes on the fretboard. That is really cool because that actually takes a second, right, to play out each note. We'll go over that. If you watched the other video, you know how that performed. Play test and a variety of half and whole step bends. <laughs> so again, they're trying to find it if it frets out. Interesting. Play test variety of chords on all styles. All styles? This guy's playing metal and then he's playing some... What a great job this guy has. <laughs> Mike, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you playing Metallica? Oh, I got... You can't, you can't pass the test until you play the Metallica and the Dire Straits and Chet Atkins. That's the Chet Atkins, Dire Straits, Metallica and, and on the chord test. So then they tune and polish the guitar. Tune it up, polish the guitar, makes sense to put it back. Uh, tune to pitch, correct, uh, polish instrument, he checked off there. Packing, inspect, uh, refresh packaging material if needed, which makes sense. I've seen this and I never realized this. I've seen this in, in some other Sweetwater guitars where I know for a fact, because I've seen these guitars so many times in the packaging they come in, that there's this extra, like in this case, there's some extra bubble wrap in this box that I, it looks like it was added, right? It looks like it was put in there after. It doesn't look like it's part of the normal packaging. And I, so it might imply that that's what that is. Professional repack, store in a climate controlled warehouse. Okay, that really, <laughs> what did you do to inspect it? Well, we put it in a climate controlled warehouse. That's kind of, okay, you're pushing it now. Double box for shipping. In the case, this is triple box because it's wedge box into that box into another box. But I understand what they mean. So, and then it has, a, this is very cool. This is some next level stuff in my opinion. I mean, uh, as someone who's, who's uh, worked on guitars, someone who owns and plays guitars, who enjoys guitars and a guitar enthusiast on many levels. And of course, uh, someone who's sold many guitars in my life. Um, I would say uh, this is something I would definitely look at this and I would be jealous. Like if I was, if you're a retailer watching this video right now, I'd be very jealous of this because this takes a lot of time. Just just the taking the time to mark these boxes and check this stuff would take somebody five minutes. And that may not sound like a lot, a lot of time to you, but that's a lot of time. You know what I mean? That adds up over time. So I, I, and I'm only, and I'm not implying they only took five minutes. I'm telling, I'm saying just to fake this card would take five minutes. <laughs> so you can understand, but I don't think they faked it. So that's, if you're watching this video, that's what this was. That's the 55 point inspection card uh, uh, from this guitar from Sweetwater. If you would like to know more about this, you can go to their website. But more importantly, if you think I should go to Sweetwater, I'm sure I could talk those guys into this. I would love to sit down with a tech, maybe one of these two guys, Tony or Mike, and say, walk us through this process and I will film it and I will not let them edit anything out. I will literally show you guys exactly what they're doing so we don't have to guess anymore. If you guys are interested in that, you put it in a, put a comment down below. I get enough uh, thumbs ups and comments and stuff. I'll make it happen. I don't know how, but I'll make it happen. All right. <laughs>